Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled series, a series that was once cancelled but is now officially uncancelled to talk about cancelled productions, because it turns out there's a whole bunch of extra stuff I didn't know about before but finally reveals itself in December. Now while I'm still spending a bit of time processing this gigantic book about a bunch of rebellious animators sharing their concept art from projects that will never get made, on the side I came to learn about another cancelled project I thought I would share with you with The Croods. Yes, this movie came out and of course you can see it right right in front of your eyes, but there is a cancelled underlying film that became the foundation for this movie. As way back in the day, this movie was to be done by Aardman Animations. Yes, the cruise was gonna be stop motion and everything. See, back during the timeline of Around the Crudes and a little bit before, there was an iconic partnership between DreamWorks Animation and Aardman. Most notably, they made Flushed Away together, but this was a deal that would eventually fall through, with Crudes being one of those projects that got transferred to one studio rather than the both of them. So how did it happen? What came to be? And what was the original idea? Well, with both studios now revisiting their hits of the early 2000s, with both Aardman making Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget and DreamWorks with Puss in Boots Last Wish dipping back into the Trekiverse of theirs, I thought I'd likewise cast back to that time. Back to when The Croods was called Crude Awakening and was being co-written by a certain former member of Monty Python. God, timelines are weird. And the timeline we ended up on is the one where both studios ended up making their own caveman movies separately. So let's cast back to 1999 when DreamWorks struck $250 million with Aardman. Up to this point, Aardman had grown strength to strength with their short films with animation mastermind Nick Park bagging them three Oscars. I wouldn't exactly say it was their peak, but you know, it was a very iconic history of theirs. These Oscars came from Creature Comforts in 1989, which is a personal favorite of mine. I mean, look at this, this is wholesome and incredible. Have you seen this? If you don't know this, this is real life human conversations that were animated onto animals as if it was their lives. Brilliant. You then also got The Wrong Trousers in 1993 and A Close Shave in 1995. Can't go wrong with a little bit of Wallace and Gromit. It was undeniable that Aardman had the quality factor, but not necessarily the resources to make a full feature length movie. Meanwhile, at the same time as this financial hurdle, Steven Spielberg and Jeffrey Katzenberg were looking to quickly grow DreamWorks into a new major Hollywood studio, to rival Disney most notably, but also Universal, Warner Brothers, and what have you, all the others. Now they'd already been beaten to the punch for the first CGI movie with Toy Story, and were now looking to invest in a secondary studio with with a different flavour to them, much like Disney had found with Pixar. Enter the Plasticine boys, all the way from Bristol of all places. The UK is getting a piece of the penny pie now. Succumb to the turn of the millennium and that juicy $250 million deal was struck to distribute no fewer than five Aardman movies. Hmm. Now the first deal hits off with a triumph in 2000 with the one and only Chicken Run, the most profitable stop motion animation movie of all time. Though the Aardman guys apparently had an interesting working relationship with Mogul Katzenberg. Jeffrey was sort of like Mrs. Tweedy. He would come into the coop and open up one of the rooms and catch us all. Now though usually with the cancelled series I go out and find all sorts of articles and concept arts when talking about a cancelled movie, I actually have all sorts of details in this documentary I found on the Aardman YouTube account called A Grand Night In, The Story of Aardman, which is where we'll be getting a lot of our sources. I'll link it in the description if you want to see it for yourself. That was Nick Park talking, for example, in that clip. Still, at the end of Chicken Run, everyone left the project pretty happy. Chicken Run now being credited as the reason why the best animated film category was introduced by the Oscars in the first place. It was probably the only W animation really got in the Oscars, but... <laughs> the movie ended up grossing $227 million. Hence, it's the best of all time. It was also one of DreamWorks' highest earners to date. Right up to the release of another movie they'd been working on, everyone knows that Shrek was a generation-defining smash mouth smash hit, grossing almost $500 million and completely blowing Chicken Run's box office out of the water. And whilst Chicken Run has that credit of the awards introduction, Shrek was the one that took all the glory, winning the first ever Best Animated Movie Academy Award, beating Monsters Inc. Also, side note, never forget that Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius was also nominated for that first one, which is one of my favourite things ever. Why was he there? Nonetheless, the deal was still on and Aardman got to work, simultaneously working on both the first feature-length Wallace and Gromit movie at the enthusiastic request of Katzenberg, as well as their first CGI effort flushed away, as we mentioned earlier. They also had some 
other project in development. In comes John Cleese and Kirk D'Amico. Now, if the second name's not familiar to you, well, this year he directed the ill-fated Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken, so... It's still relevant in DreamWorks, at least. Now, both of them had an established relationship with DreamWorks. Cleese voicing King Harold in the viciously beloved Shrek 2. It's easily in my top five, personally. And they'd been working on an animated adaptation of Roll Dolls, the Twits, which never came to fruition. But interestingly enough, it kind of has with Netflix's version releasing next year. Is there a single idea out there that's not going to be put into animation at this point? No. <laughs> Industry be industry. Still impressed with the script, DreamWorks invited the two of them to choose from the ideas they had brewing and develop it into a movie. Cleese and D'Amico chose what was, at that time, a buddy story of two cavemen on the run. Yeah, forget the cave people family we eventually got. This was a full-on prehistoric farce. Farce is a very familiar style of comedy for Cleese, having previously explored it with both Faulty Towers and his 1988 Academy Award nominated movie, A Fish Called Wanda. Farce is a genre which puts comic characters in highly precarious and improbable situations, making life difficult for the characters involved. One glance at Faulty Towers and it's that. And on the visual front for this story that was meant to be some warping of crudes that we know and twits from Roald Dahl, we only really have one singular concept art of the original character designs of the duo on the run. Here it is. Clearly still having influences for what body types the characters are going to have in the actual CGI crudes that we know, since they wanted to look a little different. But as for the details on the plot and all the rest of it, it's up to our imagination, really. But there's still plenty of story to tell around the background behind how this movie came to be and where it developed from here. Hello, hello, thank you for making it to halfway through this video. If you're interested in seeing more cancelled projects, well, you're in luck, because I've definitely got more coming out this December. So if you haven't already, come along and subscribe. I mean, after I've found all sorts of concept arts for at least four or five movies, I'm just going to try and blast them all out this month before the new year. But anyway, enough production rambling. Let me get you back to the cancelled crudes. But thank you for watching so far. Titled as Crude Awakening, a much funnier title compared to just The Crudes, but you can see how it was translated over, and so the two got to work writing the script. The Ardman DreamWorks movie machine was running smoothly with Crude Awakening ready for production following the next two releases. Cut to 2005, and initially, Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were-Rabbit seemed to be a success, charting at the top of the US box office and grossing $192 million worldwide. They also had a great PlayStation 2 game that I was really obsessed with for a time, at that time. However, when you factor in that DreamWorks made 556 million dollars with Madagascar in the same year, concern begins to grow. And Flushed Away didn't do any better, only grossing $178 million. Now maybe as a kid I would have agreed with that, I for some reason really didn't like Flushed Away when I first watched it, but now I love it, it may, it's probably because it's so British. And actually that was the issue for both studios. There was an uncertainty of cultural difference with the distinctly British Ardman and the more corporate universal appeal of DreamWorks. They'd actively invested in Ardman for this very reason, but now they were worried that British humour doesn't make money. It's also a stigma that has haunted the stop motion genre to this day. Case in point, even after studio Laika coming in and movies like Coraline, Fantastic Mr. Fox and Isle of Dogs, Chicken Runs still the highest grossing stop motion movie even before you factor in inflation. That was when in 2007, after making just three of the five agreed films, DreamWorks and Aardman announced their divorce. Crude Awakening was cancelled. Well, not quite. DreamWorks being the financer kept the kids in the separation with the project deferring to them. Now switched to a fully CGI project, Chris Sanders stepped on board after both writing and directing arguably hand-drawn animations last hurrah, Lilo and Stitch. The guy was a sword after name at the time and a big coup for the otherwise troubled project. Uh, but hang on, didn't Chris Sanders direct How to Train Your Dragon around the same time? He did! In fact, that's the movie that pulled him away from Crude Awakening. Looking back, Sanders said, The concept was really cute, but the story wouldn't quite lift off the ground. Crude Awakening needed a reinvention, and it got it from... The original co-writer? Yes, Kirk D'Amico of all people came back into the picture to direct himself. This was the point where two characters were swapped out to be a full family, D'Amico wanting to tackle an ensemble comedy instead. Gone was the on-the-run plot in place of a family simply trying to find a new home. And thus, Crude Awakening had now been fully transformed into The Crudes. 
The crudes are on the screen the entire time, D'Amico said, and it's because it's an ensemble comedy. You have to track every single one from scene to scene. You can never take it easy or cut away to the villain. The prehistoric world was rejigged to be more fictional and imaginative, most of the creatures in the movie being complete inventions. Quickly addressing comparisons to the Flintstones, there was a conscious effort to go for a radically different character design. Initially slated for 2012, the project continued to be delayed to March 1st, 2013, before finally settling to March 22nd, 2013. What were those extra few weeks before? The movie made an impressive $587 million, spawning a sequel that came in... Oof, 2020. This franchise just can't get any luck, can it? Still, making half a billion dollars seemed like the correct kind of move, as much as it's unfortunately a lot less British. Cut back to Aardman, and whilst they lost the crude awakening rights, that didn't stop them from toying with the caveman concept that they'd already developed for the movie. This would evolve over the next 10 years until we'd eventually get Eddie Redmayne as a caveman in 2018's Early Man. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this one. It's just Space Jam with cavemen and football. That's soccer for you Americans. I'm not kidding. The plots are weirdly similar, and I don't know if you've ever watched a claymation soccer match, but there's absolutely no stakes at all. I'm no sports guy, but at least with an actual game, there's some spontaneity to it. A game that is completely scripted and predestined is just so boring. I'm sorry. Only Michael Jordan can pay it off. Cry me a river, LeBron James. I always wanted to go with the underdog, but I think DreamWorks took it with the crudes on this occasion. They made way more money, they got out of a notably financial difficulty, as much as I'd gladly take a hundred million dollars myself, and what Ardman came out with afterwards ten years later just just isn't it. And there you have it. That's how Crudes and Early Man came out of one project. What I find fascinating about this whole story is that neither of these eventual movies have much in common with the original story whatsoever. Perhaps just the genre of farce is slowly fading away. And whilst The Crudes is decent enough, I would have loved to have seen a stop motion version of it. It's almost like you could see how much better the project would have been if you put The Crude script and Early Man's art style together. Maybe we would have gotten something really special. Or maybe it would have never made any money in the first place. What do you think DreamWorks and Aardman's fifth movie would have been? I'm genuinely curious to know, because that would be really interesting to me. Or maybe it's something we've already seen. Maybe it's some warped version of Shaun the Sheep or something. I don't know. Still, I'd love to hear your theories either down in the comments below or on our Discord server if you want to talk with like-minded people. But otherwise, for now, I shall end you off on that. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a little bit.